Hey fellow scrappers, welcome back to the scrap mechanic video. I'm flying my Dalek over here. Whatever. If you haven't seen the TARDIS video, then I suggest you go check that out. Anyway, today's video is all about logics. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna to walk towards this thing and also something else. But um yeah, this is basically just memory, but um, let's do that another time. We're gonna first go over the self wind XOR gates that are used in these, how they work, what you can do with it, and well, basically how binary works as well. So, this is the self wired XOR kit that I provide on the workshop. The workshop link will be down in the description below. And these are all self wired XORs. So what does this mean? In the code, in the blueprint code, it is um, manipulated so that the XOR connects to the ID of itself. So it has an outgoing connection to the ingoing connection of itself. And basically, if you attach a second connection to it, the being the button, then you can turn it on and off. But the button is unreliable. Because if you keep it on, that means that it has two signals in, so one from itself and one from the button. And when the button is on and this is off, then that means that it has uneven input, which is this state, and it'll turn on. But the next game tick, it'll have one from the button and also one from itself because it turned on. And now it is in this state where it needs to turn off and then it'll oscillate or well, oscillate it'll it'll flicker and that's not what we want we want it to turn on and off so we feed it one tick pulses but um if you do not like this setup because it's blueprint edited or something i don't know then i can also explain it with basically this setup so you have three xor gates all looped in a loop like this and you all give them input from one gate, then they act the same, as you can see. So that this is basically the same as a self-wired XOR. Now, if you give this a one tick pulse, then they will turn off when they are on, and they will turn on when they are off. Now, how do you create a one tick pulse? Basic setup is one gate, an AND gate, an OR gate, whatever, going into two other gates, where one is an XOR gate or a NOR gate, and the other one is an AND, and then the XOR is connected to the AND. And then when you press this button, it'll create a one tick pulse. And when you hold the button, it'll also create a one tick pulse. Now, why does this happen? Well, this is the basic setup. When it's off and you turn the button on, so you hold the button over here, the first game tech this will turn on. Then the second game tick, this turning on will get transferred to the next gates, so these will update with the no signal given from this one. Which means this one turns off because this one is on, and this one turns on because it still has this value and it gets this value. Now another game tick and this one will turn off because it gets updated with the nil value of this one, as you can see here. And that is how you get a one tick pulse. And this is the state where the pulses get, where the pulse gets outputted. Now, what can you all do with this? If you just create the one tick pulse generator or pulse shortener or whatever you want to call it, to a self wired XOR like this. Then you get a T flip-flop. So pressing it will turn it on or off. Like that. So it's basically just a flip. It'll flip the state of that thing. Now, what else can you do with this? If you rewire it a little, then you can create something that will always set it. So this is the set a gate. Now what do you need to do to rewire it? You rewire this one to the XOR, uh, to the NOR gate. And that way, when this one is on, 
the NOR gate will turn off. And that way this one won't allow it to flip anymore. So it will only flip when this one allows the AND gate to turn on. And only this one will be on when this one is off. So this will always set it. Now when you rewire this one to the input over here, this gate over here, then you get a reset, a reset input. So this is basically the D, you know, the flip set a reset function. Now it is pretty big. If you want to make a D flip flop, that would mean combining some of these things. But um, a D flip flop is for the next time. Um, first off, we're gonna look at how binary works and we're going to check out how to make a counter out of these things. So how does binary work? Um, this will be the left bit and the right bit will be over here. So um, we have a counter over here. This is the counter. I'll go over how this works in a minute. But we'll use this to illustrate how binary works. So, first bit turns on, this means it's one. Next state, next line, this one turns off, and the next one turns on. That is two, value two. Next state, this one turns on, oh well, this one stays on, this one turns on, and that means this is three. And this is value four, value five, value six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now, if you check the values of this line and this line and so forth, and you can see this line means 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 200, blah, 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 and so on. Now, you can see a repeating pattern in here. Um, I kind of cut off the zero line, but um, just imagine that there is another line under here. Anyway, the first over here will always repeat one zero, so, uh, one zero, one zero, one zero, and so on, as you can see over here. Second line always two on, two off, two on, two off, and so forth. And this one four on, four off, eight on, sixteen. 32 and so on. Now we have values 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and so on. As you can see this repeat and if you put these two on top of each other they will repeat in here and so on. And also this one repeats over here and as you, uh, if you go check it out then this one will repeat over here, as you can see, this pattern always repeat because it's binary stuff. Anyway, we got a counter over here and we feed it the one tick pulse over here and you will see that it counts up just like how this thing does. So we got four on, like over there, but press it once and it will go to the next one or oh, 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 this. This one, and then one, two, three, and so on. Now, you can also make it count really fast. How does this work? Well, when does it go to the next state? Well, if the previous bit, well, all the previous bits, so let's take this one as an example. If all the previous bits are on, then all of these needs to flip. Let's take this state. All of these are on, as you can see, and that means that these need to flip. So this flip. Now, how do you do that with logic gates? Well, the first one always flips up and down, as you can see here. So basically just a one tick pulse feeding it into this one meaning this will always turn on and off whatever you do. For the next one, 
this one will only flip whenever this one was on. So if the previous one is on and there is a no input signal, as you can see here, then this one can flip. So give a signal, this one flips and this one flips as well. These two I'll flip. That goes on for the whole thing. So if you want to flip this one, then all of the previous one needs to be on. Let me just quickly show you. All of these need to be on, then it will allow for this one to flip because these are all hooked to this end gate. And when there is a signal, then it'll flip it. Now, you can also create more stuff with this, not only count up. You can also make it count down. So let's count it for a second like this. And this, by the way, it counts 40 ticks per second. Like um, you can see it over here, the amount of ticks in game you have for one second, there's 40 ticks. This thing can count real time, like 40 ticks a second. So counting up and counting down, as you can see. Now, when does it count down? Whenever, this one will always flip between one and zero. And this one will only flip whenever everything before it is off. And this one will flip whenever these two are off. This one will flip whenever these are off. And that is how it will work. So, you have NOR gates over here, so that means all of the previous ones, these, need to be off in order to allow this NOR gate, uh, nor, yeah, NOR gate to turn on. And when it turns on, it'll flip this one. And of course, you have an update signal over here that will allow this gate to do its action on this gate. And that's basically how it works. Now, how to reset them. You feed the signal to a line of bits, or well, a line of gates. This line, this line of gates goes into another line of gates, and that goes back into these. Then you have an enable signal to these gates, and you give it a one tick pulse. It will allow for the data over here to flow in here, for one tick it'll allow it and then the next tick it will erase it but during that next tick it will already be in here and reset this one because it gets its own feedback boom that's basically how counting works um, next time we're gonna go cover D flip flops uh, T flip flops and all that crap and we're gonna go try and build this thing, which is ultra compact RAM, ROM, whatever you wanna call it. You can store values in it, and it's ultra fast. And yeah, if you wanna see more logic crap, then don't forget to slap that like button and subscribe for more awesome content. If you wanna see other stuff, then go to the poll in the video on the notification on the top right corner and vote over there so I know what you guys want or download the video, whatever, I don't care. <laughs> but honestly, um, we're gonna go use this for something in the future. You'll probably see next week and it'll be awesome as fuck. So don't forget to subscribe and see you guys in the next one. Bye.